What's up, guys? It's Joseph and Ray here again for another episode of Ask EVGA, uh, probably our most exciting and fun segment to film and edit. Uh, and I just wanted to thank all you guys who leave comments for us, and uh, thank you to everyone who left comments for previous videos as well. Uh, if you do want to have questions answered by myself and by Ray, um, go ahead and leave comments in the comment section below here on the YouTube video or on any of our social media. We kind of look out for that as well. Uh, so to jump right in. Okay. First question is for you, Joseph. Uh, this is from Luke W. on the uh, on our EVGA channel. Uh, he says, thank you for your amazing warranty on GPUs. EVJ recently replaced a 1080 Ti Kingpin edition of mine that died, uh, which has been disassembled but never abused too bad. And I was wondering, how many spare special edition cards do you keep around just in case there's an RMA and you need to replace one? I have not seen my card for sale for a long time, but I am very grateful that EVJ was able to replace it regardless yeah now um, there certainly aren't uh, any specific number of mm -hmm. replacements but we do keep replacements on hand um, we also do sometimes get RMAs right. and uh, those can be recertified mm -hmm. properly or fixed you know or sometimes there isn't even an issue but they sent it in right um, so we definitely test all those very thoroughly and um, a lot of times we'll have some stock based on both the RMAs and then, you know, obviously when there is a new card or a particular model, we do try to keep some of those on hand mm -hmm. in the beginning mm -hmm. for the initial RMAs. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't have any particular numbers on that right. per se. No. So it's hard to say something like a kingpin that was a, a low volume production card, a really special card for us. Mm -hmm. um, so it does cause challenges when it comes time to replace those cards. Um, so even if should we not have a card that exact model to replace for you, um, we will always on a one on one basis with you as a customer come up with a solution. Um, so just know that if you're doing a replacement with us, um, you will be happy with with any outcome that we have for you. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so the next question is from Method Method on YouTube, and he says, okay, how about a real question instead of all those softballs? Okay, no very, more softballs. Very funny. Um, <laughs> you guys updated the X299 FTWK with a new VRM heatsink. Mm -hmm. For those of us that are looking to upgrade, how will we differentiate the new revision? And are you guys planning on using similar heatsink design like the one found on the X299 Dark going forward. Okay, yeah, so we did update the heatsink on the FTWK. Um, some customers have noticed that because now there is a small fan on that VRM heatsink, and the design is more similar to what we had on the X299 uh, Dark, where it has a dual fan set up for the VRM. Um, for the FTWK, that is basically the current revision of the motherboard. If you get a motherboard from us here at EVGA, um, whether that be an RMA replacement or a motherboard that you buy brand new, it will uh, have that uh, updated uh, heatsink on it. Um, that said, if you have the the current the the previous model, um, there's there's. Uh, perfectly good VRM heatsink on that as well. Mm -hmm. um, I expect that if you were to purchase it from retail, that you're more likely to get the uh, newer revision, um, but it's hard to say for sure, um, because they sometimes will have inventory for longer than we do. Um, all of our inventory should be uh, updated on that, um, but uh, if you have any questions or concerns, you know, feel free to call us uh, in regards to your particular motherboard. Yeah, I gotta say that uh, that heatsink design has gotten a lot of rave reviews mm -hmm. and a lot of respect from yeah. you know the community. So, yeah, thank you guys a lot for that. Right. I think it's awesome, right. especially yeah. for the X299 chipset when sort of a beefier VRM heatsink right. is kind of needed. Right. And uh, like Ray said, the old revision also had a very beefy yep. heatsink on it, it so it was good. it was definitely sufficient. But you know, um, some people who run that the very highest end Intel CPU, you know. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Those we're, things we're, run the VRMs, man. <laughs> I think uh, we're a little bit different in that our boards are sort of trying to shift the conversation to uh, less about aesthetics and more about what is actually a good VRM heatsink. Yeah. Um, and I think that is something that the extreme overclockers and the reviewers out there um, really do respect yeah. because um, that is not something. A lot of the motherboards that I've owned, older motherboards, um, it's clear that the VRM heatsink was more an aesthetic touch than really anything else. 
um, yeah. whereas these are active cooling um, units that uh, we're trying to move to. So in regards to your question, is this the kind of thing that we're planning in the future? I don't know, um, but personally, um, this to me is only a good thing. I don't see why we wouldn't continue with uh, improving uh, heatsink designs with each generation. Yeah, yeah, we've always been function over form. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can tell that with like our highest end board, a lot of times the highest end motherboard is going to be flashier, more RGBs sure, sure. With, from other companies. Our you know, top yeah, end board is dark. Yeah. And it's like no flash, no frill, just the best overclocking board there is you right. know, for that chip. Which set. is an aesthetic in and of itself. You know, a, a, it's, it's a beautiful. black, a dark, that is an aesthetic that we go for, a more serious tone, yeah. um, which I always appreciate. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. We, I can talk right. about that forever. Um, and this one is uh, from Rich Brown okay. on YouTube. Uh, what about official EVGA GPU disassembly guides for when thermal paste dries and cracks and needs to be replaced in a few years? Uh, keep up the good content. Okay, thank, thank you, you for that. Um, well, we don't have any official disassembly guides. It's not a bad idea, actually. And quite honestly, on this channel, we want to get into a lot of content for you guys, sort of how-to stuff. So that's definitely something we can consider for a future video to show you in general. That said, most of our coolers are actually pretty easy for disassembly. A lot of them are mostly held on by the four spring screws, whereas um, our reference design may actually be much more complicated than that. Um, if there's any specific questions that you have on your your own uh, graphics card, um, I would implore you to either reach out to our support team or um, reach out on our forums. We have thousands of forums members. Uh, they have the same model cards. They know them inside and out, and they can help you do a really nice, just quick pictures, uh, you know, pull this off, pull this off, pull this off, so that you can repaste your card pretty easily. Um, but thank you for the suggestion on that. We'll definitely take uh, that into consideration. Yeah, I think that's good, got good potential for maybe um, a future video. Mm -hmm. So I think I went out of order on the questions there, so okay. you can ask me this next one. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, any new uh, mice or keyboards from EVJ? Now, that is an interesting question. We've sort of answered that a lot of times in, in the sense that we don't know what new products are coming. Right. Um, it would be, you know, nice if we could, you know, be able to relay, yeah, you know, this is the next gen, but we, we just don't know yet. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of talk in the community about, you know, what about an RGB keyboard or, you know, um, maybe wireless mouse or all mm -hmm. kinds of different sure. stuff like that. Uh, I don't know. I, I would like to probably see some stuff and it looks like our, com our keyboards have been pretty successful mm -hmm. thus far. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have been buying them and, and really like them. So I, I see maybe, you know, continuing that, um, at least in the keyboard sure. side of things, but. Sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, you have to consider that um, as far as you're asking any new keyboards, well, uh, the Z10 is is fairly new for us. We have mm -hmm. not had that on the market, uh, and that's a brand new segment for us. Um, so it's one of those things where when you bring out a new product, you kind of want to see how it does and how people take to it. Um, and so far, things have been pretty positive, so um, we'll see. We don't know what the future holds, but uh, we're excited about anything PC gaming related, so you can imagine that we look at every possible sector of that market. Yeah, and I and you know we're going to have a lot of exciting new products too mm -hmm. that um, we've never done before coming sure. out in the next probably couple of years. So this last year, maybe two years for us, has been pretty yeah. epic. I mean, a right. lot of stuff we never got our feet wet with, mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, we're kind of feeling out like where we should go at this point. So any suggestions too for new yeah. products? Like, sure. please feel free to to put those down and. And I'm on the product team, so I'd be happy to recommend whatever I think is a good idea. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to ask Joseph this one because I think I got two in a row there. Yeah. Uh, this is from Fatal. Uh, he is asking, is the 1080 Ti FTW DT, I believe FTW3 DT, uh, is a good buy or should I wait for the next gen? Well, um, at this point, the next gen has already been officially announced. Right. Um, so... I'd say it's safe to wait at this point for the next gen. Uh, it really just depends on, you know, maybe uh, uh, if if you think the performance will right. be worth it, right. or you know, if you think the price will be worth it. Right. Um, at this point, you yeah. know, it's up. It's really up to you. I can't really tell you what decision to make, but. Um, we're so close to the next gen that I'd probably wait myself. Right. It's. I mean, for me, the higher order bit on that is um, price 
for performance. So mm -hmm. if you're looking at, say, like a 1440p, even a high refresh rate, um, I don't see you really needing any performance headroom above something like a 1080 Ti because it is so powerful. Mm -hmm. So if you're already looking at the high end, uh, unless you're looking at this and you're going, well, in the future, I might want a high refresh rate 4K, mm -hmm. where the next gen stuff may actually be better with that. Otherwise, you know, consider that you may be able to get a good price on a 10 series now, um, and you don't have to wait. So there's a there is a lot to consider there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited to see what comes next and see what performance we get. But uh, at this point, uh, we are just uh, sitting pretty and, and seeing what happens. Yeah, and I did want to mention too, you know, I'm sorry uh, for the delay and sometimes in our answers, mm -hmm. you know, we don't film the, we don't, you know, put up the video uh, or get questions and then film the very sure. next day. So yeah. the, the questions aren't immediate, just so you guys know. Um, but we do plan on sort of improving that schedule a little bit as, sure. as time moves on. Sure. I would like to have it where every week um, the, it's last week's questions. Right. So we're at least only one week behind. Sometimes we're a little bit more than that. So yeah, yeah. The, these these questions we're fielding are about two or three weeks um, mm -hmm. behind when they were initially asked. So some of the information may actually change. Um, so that that does affect it. And like Joseph says, we're going to yeah. tighten that up a little bit. Yeah. Editing um, gets to be a bit of a, yeah. a challenge sometimes. You know, takes takes a long time. Okay. Uh, and this will be the last question okay. that we have today. Uh, Anthony Diego. YouTube. Uh, he says, so how much for an upgrade slash trade in from the original X299 Micro ATX board? It's a good question. As a matter of fact, the X299 Micro 2 is now on our step up list. So if you haven't looked at that recently, you're not aware, nice. um, go to evj.com, click on service, and then step up. And uh, that's where the step up process is explained. Joseph already filmed the video, does a very good job of explaining the whole process. We can put the link to that in the description. Why, thank you, Ray. Uh, <laughs> and it shows the full list of products that we currently offer on uh, the step up list. So if you purchased your micro within the last 90 days, authorized retailer, you have your invoice, yada, yada, um, then feel free to uh, go to that page. Um, go to your product page and, and try to start this step up for that. Um, as far as pricing, uh, I believe the MSRP on a Micro 2 is $299.99. Um, so the cost would essentially be uh, whatever you paid for your micro board um, minus uh, subtracting from that $299 price plus any shipping. Um, so you may actually get a pretty good deal um, on a Micro 2 depending on what you spent on your micro board so long as it's in that step up window. Um, but yes, uh, thank you for that question because it is important to point out that the micro two board is now offered on step up yeah and uh i didn't even realize that so i, I yeah totally forgot about that people but. forget people honestly really <laughs> do forget that motherboards are yeah. part of our step up and i think it's because unlike a graphics card where you can just pull one out and then put the new one in and it's really easy yeah. uh, a lot of people may not want to go through the trouble of basically pulling apart their whole system to replace their motherboard but we do offer yeah. that so please you know feel free to use it it's a service for you and uh keeps you in the fold well i think the micro two had actually actually uh, quite a few improvements mm -hmm. and that would be something that I would upgrade personally yeah. Oh, yeah. myself. So. I mean it's one of those things where everything is going to be compatible from your old board um, mm -hmm. and everything that's on the Micro 2 is an improvement so yeah. um, it's certainly something to consider doing a step up. Okay. That's basically it. So nice. thank you guys. Uh, this has been another fun episode of Ask EVGA. We'll have another one for you this coming week. Please make sure to put your questions and comments in the section below. Yes. Goodbye.